Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. Going into the ninth and final round of Norway Chess, still possible for three players to win the tournament. So Carlsen was just out in front ahead of Mamedyarov and a bit behind them Anand. But if things went Anand's way, he could still win. But actually, things began to shape up pretty quickly. Anand drew his classical game against uh, Ariantari, so he was out of the running. Carlsen with black against Topalov had a, quite a, a boring position, but if anything, he was on the wrong end of a draw, so no real winning chances for Carlsen and, and a fairly dry position. Although, you know, both sides were trying. So that meant that Shakhria Mamadyarov, playing white against his compatriot Temur Rajabov, had a golden opportunity. If he could win this classical game, he could win the tournament. So let's have a look. So it's a Catalan. Well, Mamadyarov loves to play the Catalan, or loves to fianchetto his king's bishop. Uh, a with d4 against lots of different systems actually so no big surprise there and Rajabov plays bishop b4 check bishop d2 and now the bishop goes back to e7 so the point of this is to put the bishop on a slightly awkward square on d2 bishop g2 but of course this is a very well-known position both sides castle and c6. So Rajbov playing in this really solid way. And b6. Now here, well, normal moves are you know bishop f4 or rook d1, even rook c1. But black is really solid in those positions. But Mamadyarov, well, he likes to mix it, and the fact that he had to try and mix it to play for a win today probably suited him. And he just went for knight c3. What he's doing here is using the fact that he's sort of got an extra move um, with that bishop here. So he's connecting the rooks. And it means that when black takes that pawn here, whoops, I mean here, then he's making use of that extra move to gain a bit more time for the initiative. Now black doesn't have to take the pawn, could play bishop a6 here, but Rajabov went for it. d takes c4 and e4. So I think Mamadyarov is in his element here, attacking his opponent. So he just advances the pawn to e5, this lovely spearhead, which just drives that knight away from good defensive position on f6 and you can see opens up this diagonal opens up the e4 square for white pieces so knight e4 so typical position with the spearhead on e5 with this knight sort of looming over like this and this diagonal here so often important in the catalan white often generates chances on that diagonal but black is a pawn up that's the extra pawn now, how do you defend it? You could play b5, but that sort of can leave that square a bit weak. So Raja plays bishop a6 to defend the pawn, and sometimes introduces this threat to take the rook. But now Mamadyarov was intent on attacking, and he just went for it. Knight eg5, threatening mate in one, so that more or less forces g6. So now there are, there are weaknesses here. And h4. So this is all pretty straightforward stuff. Let's get Harry down the board, weaken Black's king position, and just go for it. And if Black wants to take material, well, I think Mamadyarov would have been absolutely delighted. I mean, that's such an easy position for White to play. Yes, White's the exchange down but you can potentially push that knight. And basically nothing has changed on the king side. You're still going to push with h5. 
could maybe also play bishop takes and, and then bring the bishop here and then king g2, rook h1 and so on. Something similar happens in the game. Let's have a look. So h4 just played, king g7. Yeah, it's a better move. h5. So the attack is absolutely raging now. Here, Raja decides to take that exchange. So it's pretty similar to the variation we looked at. So bishop takes, and yes, bishop takes f1. So the bishop wants to switch to this diagonal to attack down here. So why did Raja take this? Well, first of all, he secures the knight in the middle of the board. And now I think if black couldn't play b5, this would be a very different story. If that knight were driven away, I think white would just have a tremendous position. But with the knight secure on d5, this gives black a little bit of hope. Because it does cover the f6 square and still looks at some important squares here. Time to transfer the queen. Queen e4. So this one is potentially heading over here. Or maybe the h-file. Or just preparing bishop d3. And, well, once the bishop sets up on, on d3, then you know, white has this battery here, and then you know all kinds of sacks are possible to, to undermine the g6 pawn. So that's why queen e8 is played. Bishop d3 anyway. And white, as I mentioned before, is getting ready to play king g2 and rook h1. And all white pieces are in play. All white pieces are attacking. I mean, this looks like such a fantastic position for white. And I think it is. You know, Shaq absolutely in his element here. Now, I mean... Raja's next move is really unexpected, actually. You know, I would have anticipated something like knight b6. And, you know, maybe knight c4 trying to get some play. Even so, one could take and play rook h1. And this is already looking very good for white. But I, I would not have anticipated in this position bishop takes knight... So giving up that important dark square bishop, you know, there's lots of squares that need covering, but still, that's what Raja did. And, well, his defense was really cold-blooded. Watch this. H6. Now, it's possible just to drop the knight back. You know, there's pressure here. Knight h4 is coming. Not to mention king g2 and rook h1. But actually, black can put up a defense with this. I'm sure this was his intention. And then, you know, it could go into an endgame. But black, with that knight secure in the middle, it should be okay there. Or the queen could drop back, and then g5. Again, it looks really pleasant for white. But there's nothing clear there. So h6 just played. h takes g6. Now, if... Pawn takes knight. White really does break through. This is crushing. And bishop takes g5. Well, white will have to put a knight in here, but it's obviously good for white. Okay, let's go back. So h takes g6, just take, just played. f takes g6. Now the knight has to drop. And knight cb6. So this is remarkably cool from Rajabov here. King g2. I mean, it looks so scary with all white pieces lined up and the rook ready to come over. And But check out black's next move. This is unbelievable. h5. Now, Rajabov has not had the best tournament. But I think this game shows, well, he's actually a class act. He really is. Because, I mean, h5 looks very strange. But actually, black has to defend somehow. And black just about gets away with this. Knight h4 is the machine move here. But black is still defending after knight e7. And then, well, the next knight might come in here. And maybe this one can defend like this. So rook h1 played. Queen f7. 
g4. It's actually possible to stack back the exchange here, like this. This didn't happen. And defend like this. Again, it's, these knights pull black through in this position. Still, I, I wouldn't rush into that with black. I think Rajabov did the right thing. He played knight c4. Bishop g5. I mean, this is pretty scary. Knight takes c3, hitting the queen. Bishop f6 check, and the king goes back. Looks really dodgy. Looks really dodgy, but actually still all right. Still all right for black. If queen takes c6, well, the, the queen gets pushed way over, and that, that should be okay for black. So queen e1 played, attacking the knight, which came back to d5. So at least the, the queen has been pushed away. Now, if pawn takes pawn, then that bishop gets nabbed. And incredibly, black is surviving this one. Still okay for black. There's no, no decisive move around there. So knight d5 has just been played. Knight g5 attacks the queen, which came to d7. And bishop takes g6. Incredibly scary. Knight takes f6. One of those bishops has disappeared. That's rather important for black. A check, and rook takes h5. At least black has you know, exchanged a few pieces. And now here, there is a mad move that's possible. Um, Mamadiarov played f3. It's possible to play bishop f5, and that, that's maybe the last decent chance. I mean, it's a mad move. Because if pawn takes bishop, then rook check and rook takes queen. Queen d5. If queen d5, then you can take. Now, I mean, this is really unclear. Um, and white still has some attack. I mean, I, I could give you a very long computer line here um, that shows that black does actually survive um, and it might still be a draw but it, I mean it's completely crazy I kind of understand why Mamadjarov you know you, you couldn't be sure in a game about it Bishop f5 it's just way too complicated and you could easily lose so he played f3 karma just make sure there's no threat here King is safer. That pawn is protected by the knight, so that's that's kind of a nice little fortress. Rook h8 and queen c3. And here, Mamadiarov obviously couldn't see a way forward. After queen c3, he offered a draw, which Rajabov accepted, and basically that meant that Carlson won the tournament because he. Um, well, he drew the classical game and then he actually held out in the Armageddon with black. So anyway, that put him ahead. And after this draw in the classical game, Mamadjorov couldn't catch up, even if he won the Armageddon. Uh, which he didn't, by the way. <laughs> that ended um, in a draw. So, I mean, this even in this final position, it's pretty unclear, actually. But I can understand why Mamadjorov... Um, had just run out of steam here. You know, it's very difficult for white to find a way forward. You know, when this bishop is sort of pinned here, it's really not clear what, what white is doing next. But still a very tricky position. So there we are. All that meant that Carlsen won the tournament. He finished just ahead of Mamadjarov. Carlsen finished on 16 and a half. Mamadjarov 15.5, Anand 14.5. Um, Carlson said afterwards that you know he, he was well, pretty shattered. He was incredibly tired. And he said that he just ran out of steam. Um, but the first six rounds, he played pretty well. And he was pleased with his classical chess, but not the, the Armageddon games where he, he didn't particularly shine, actually, comparatively. But... 
yeah, there there we go. Once again, Carlson just ahead in tournaments. He does have just an extraordinary record. Right, I think that's just about it. I hope you enjoyed uh, my coverage of Norway chess. Uh, it's been been a very exciting tournament. Um, but uh, more news uh, from me <laughs> coming your way. Actually, my book on the Kalashnikov has just been published by New in Chess in collaboration with Chessable. So it's the book of the Kalashnikov course. So I'll be introducing that properly in my next video. So watch out for that. But do check out New in Chess uh, to see the uh, Kalashnikov Sicilian, the new book. Thanks for watching.